The land of Hyrule in The Legend of Zelda has some pretty crazy contraptions. From magical sword beams, to speedy boots, to a top that you can stand on and ride around all Beyblade style, it's got its fair share of fun things to test. One of the newest entries in Link's toolbox is none other than the trusty smartphone, I mean, uh, the Sheikah Slate. This little gadget has it all. A map with GPS, a camera for taking selfies, and magical tools to do almost anything. So, let's start off by taking a deep dive into one of these super tools. And yes, I know, Pura has made a few updates in Tears of the Kingdom, but we'll get to that game another time. Today, we're looking at the original tool called Magnesis. In the Breath of the Wild, Link's handy smartphone has a bunch of things that are like high-tech apps called runes. Magnesis is one of these. According to the game, this rune grants Link the ability to manipulate mentala... Manipulate magnetic metal... Uh, manipulate metallic objects using magnetism. Good grief, that's a mouthful. Anyway, some of these things are huge, and lifting them with a magnetic field would be no joke. So the question I have is, how strong of magnets are we talking about here? First, let's take a look at how magnets work. A magnet is something like a rock or a piece of metal that pulls certain things towards it. Magnets have a field around them, where a force can be felt all around it. It does this because of the way the atoms in a magnet are all lined up. Atoms are like spinning tops where electrons circle a core made up of protons and neutrons. This makes an electrical current. In most things, the atoms are all pointed in different directions, so the currents get canceled out by each other. But in some things, like iron and nickel, most electrons spin in the same direction. That means they are strongly affected by magnets, and can even become magnets themselves. In Breath of the Wild, all of the objects that can be manipulated with magnesis, still a mouthful, seems to be made out of iron or steel. One of the biggest things here is this door right here. So let's go ahead and figure out how big it is. Using the in-game height of our lucky volunteer Link, we can use pixel measurements to see how big the door is. Thanks to the Bread Pirate for solving that one for us. This means that the door is 10 and a half meters tall, five and a little bit meters wide, and about half a meter thick. Let's go ahead and assume it's made of steel. If it were solid though, it would weigh as much as a blue whale. Let's just say it's steel plated and hollow on the inside. This gives us a lower estimate on how heavy the thing actually is. Using some industry standard metal sheets, we find that the door would weigh in at 2,720 kilograms, or 5,986 pounds. Just about the weight of a Model X Tesla. And that actually seems pretty reasonable given the size of the thing. Now, Magnesis has the ability to lift an object and make it hover in whatever spot we want. So, the final thing we need to figure out is how much force it would take to hold the door off the ground. Using the Birdman minigame, we find that gravity is around 32 meters per second squared in Hyrule. No wonder Link can't jump in most Zelda games. That's triple the amount of Earth's gravity. But hey, it's a video game. I mean, I can't jump much more than he can, and um, I'm getting off topic. Using gravity and the door's weight, we then can find that the force needed to lift the door is 87,040 newtons. That's one and a half times the bite force of a T-Rex. And now I have the image of Link summoning a T-Rex out of thin air to move things for him. Finally, we can use this force to figure out how strong the magnets are in the Sheikah Slate. The door and the Sheikah Slate act like two magnets being pulled together, so we can use this formula here to find the strength of the magnetic field. Meaning that the field at its furthest distance is equal to 8.27 Teslas. No, it's not the car this time, it's actually a measurement of how strong a magnetic field is, named after Nikola Tesla. Anyway, for comparison's sake, Earth's magnetic field on the surface is between 25 and 65 micro-Teslas, and an MRI runs at 1.5 to 3 Teslas. So now you know that every time you use Magnesis, you are exposing Link to 2 or 3 MRIs all at once. Luckily, there are no known risks for exposing yourself to that strong of a magnetic field, unless you're moving really fast through it, which can cause symptoms of nausea, metallic taste, and something called magnetophosphines? Oh, there's also the slight danger posed by turning it on and having metal objects flying through the air that might impale you. 
Anyway, that's it for this session of the Bite Size Lab. What? What do you mean Tears of the Kingdom has a better ability than Magnesis? That can lift anything? That means I have to make a whole new video? So, what'd you think of my first full science video? I'm just getting started, but I hope you're enjoying the style. It's a lot of work to put these together, so if you're enjoying this, I'd appreciate it if you could subscribe to see more. Anyway, not sure how to finish this off now, so, um, yeah, enjoy this little dance. <laughs>